the Shroud of Turin. Despite over a century of extensive research, this artifact continues to raise various concerns, challenging many people's skepticism. It is the most widely researched item in history. No other object known to exist has received more academic study. Has the century-long mystery of Jesus' true face finally come to an end? Scientists have now demonstrated the biggest miracle in history, a new AI image of Jesus. This artwork is based on Jesus' visage from the shroud, and this has exposed stunning secrets about the Christian faith that you will never believe. For centuries, modern science has attempted and failed to answer the mysteries of the Shroud of Turin through extensive research, especially the image of a male. Strange imprints on the shroud. However, controversy erupted when scientists had an unexpected stroke of luck and discovered more than they had hoped for. The hallowed relic contained the truth about Christ's actual form. Join us in this video. Discover the secrets of the Shroud and the true face of Jesus. The Turin Shroud, often known as the Holy Shroud, is a centuries-old textile bearing, a faint impression of the front and back of a crucified guy. The Shroud of Turin is a precise photographic negative taken on a photographically sensitive cloth in an era before photography, an artifact. You would want to leave all of the evidence, even the dirt and dust, so that science could investigate it in greater depth to see what else they could discover on the shroud. For ages, the shroud has been cherished by millions of believers, most notably Catholics, as the genuine burial shroud used to shroud the body of Jesus of Nazareth after his crucifixion and upon which. Jesus' body image is magically implanted. This strange image contains markings that correspond to the crucifixion wounds of Jesus, thorn marks on the head, lacerations on the back as if from whipping, and bruises. On the shoulders, there are different traces of what appears to be blood. The human image on the shroud is somewhat easier to see in a black and white photographic negative than in its natural sepia color impact. Second Opia discovered the shroud in 1898 and published the first images of it. The shroud is a precise photographic negative captured on a photographically sensitive cloth. There was a period before pictures. This negative image is related with a well-known Catholic devotion to Jesus' holy face. While the existence of its image remains a mystery to this day, even for advanced science, the greater mystery is... If the cloth is that which clothed Jesus' crucified body since its discovery, the shroud has been at the center. Its authenticity has been called into question. Many people devote themselves to this object, believe that it is a relic of Christ. Perhaps with this recent finding, the truth has been disclosed to the world, finally gets to see the true face of the Son of God. The holy shroud, like its mystery history, has unique dimensions, measuring approximately 4.4 by 1.1 meters. Based on the model, they can tell he was about 5 feet 11 inches tall, although the average height at the period was roughly 5 feet 5 inches. The shroud is a rectangular cloth made of flax fibrils and woven in a 3 to 1 herringbone twill pattern. Its most distinguishing feature is the faint brownish picture in both front and back views of a naked man holding his hands, folded across his groin. The image shows the entire body, which has perplexed many experts, including those who have tried to debunk any divine influence in its genesis. The two perspectives of the body are aligned in the middle plane, body and point in opposing directions, front and back shots of the head. Meet almost in the center of the cloth, Despite being constructed of exceedingly sensitive linen, the shroud is incredibly detailed. A slight straw image can be seen on the crown of the textile strands. A man in yellow with a beard, mustache, and shoulder-length hair parted in the center. The man in the image appears muscular and tall. Expert measurements show that he is between 5 feet 7 inches and 6 feet 2 inches tall. Even more intriguing are the reddish-brown streaks. 
The scars on the shroud match to those described in the Bible as Jesus' crucifixion. Despite all of these examinations and procedures, we cannot be scientifically convinced that the guy in the shroud is a Christian. With all of this conclusive evidence, you might. I am curious as to why the Shroud of Turin exists. It has not been long since Jesus' burial shroud was verified. Before the age of cutting-edge technology, the shroud passed through thick and. In the past, many people struggled for it. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. Unravel its sanctity. So, how was the shroud found in the first place? What was its history? How was the shroud discovered? The shroud first appears in historical records in 1354, when it was acquired by a prominent knight, Geoffroy de Charnay, Seigneur de Liray. On its first known display in 1389, the local bishop of Troyes denounced the shroud as fraudulent, declaring it to be cunningly painted, with the artist who painted it attesting to its truth. The Avignon anti-pope Clement VII, 1378-94, did not take a position on the shroud's validity, but did allow it to be used as a devotional object while it was portrayed as an image or depiction of the actual shroud. Successive popes, however, accepted it as authentic, beginning with Julius II in 1415, in the final phase of the Hundred Years' War, the shroud was removed from the Church of Lear to be deposited indefinitely. Safekeeping at Montfort Castle, Marguerite de Charny, the granddaughter of the knight who endowed the Church of Liray, seized ownership of the cloth and displayed it in the Church of saint hippolyte Douze. Marguerite declined to surrender the shroud to Liray. She took the shroud on tour, including exhibitions in Scheim and Mons. In 1453, Marguerite gave the shroud to Louis, Duke of Savoy. However, in 1457, the Curia of Bessanon condemned her for selling the shroud and disregarding the canons of Liray. It became the House of Savoy's Palladium, and by 1466, it had been put in the Ducal Chapel of Chambéry, the Savoyard state capital. I believe the outcome is amazing. It was done on a variety of strands from the Shroud of Turin, collected from various locations. In 1506, Pope Julius II awarded indulgences to anyone who has considered an image of. The Pope declared the Shroud to be an authentic relic of Christ. Unfortunately, in 1532, a fire at the chapel of Chambéry melted the reliquary. The shroud fell into the molten silver went through the folded layers of the garments, initiating a degradation process that was only temporarily halted. Through the intervention of linen folds, the impoverished Clare nuns in Chambéry later repaired the holes with patches to restore the damage. They had sewn 14 huge triangular patches and eight smaller ones to the parts of the shroud had been burned. Emmanuel Philibert, Duke of Savoy, ordered that the fabric be transferred to Turin, the new Savoyard capital, in 1578, and it has remained there ever since. Since the late 17th century, the shroud has been maintained in this chapel, which was built by architect Guarino Guarini and is attached to both the cathedral and Turin's royal palace. In 1694, repairs were done to the Sebastian Valfres shroud improves on the earlier patching of the inferior clairs. In 1868, Princess Maria Clotilde of Savoy carried out more repairs. The shroud was photographed for the first time in 1898 by Secondo Pia, an Italian lawyer and amateur photographer, at a public display. The shroud belonged to the House of. Savoy remained until 1983 when it was bequeathed. The former king addressed the Holy See. Umberto II of Italy left his will. On April 11, 1997, a fire, possibly sparked by arson, endangered the shroud once more, but thankfully, no damage was done. In 2002, the Holy See had the shroud repaired. 
The textile backing and 30 patches were removed, allowing for photography. Scan the cloth's backside. For the first time, a faint section. An image of the body was discovered on. The back of the shroud. The shroud was returned to public view in 2004. The controversial Turin shroud will be displayed for the first time in five years in 2010. The old piece of linen is now on display in Turin Cathedral. According to church officials, that number is higher. Two million people came to witness it. The shroud has been restored multiple times, and precautions have been taken to preserve it from additional damage and pollution. It is protected by laminated bulletproof glass in an airtight casing. The temperature and humidity controlled box is filled with argon and oxygen to prevent chemical changes, and the shroud is mounted on an aluminum support that slides on. The Shroud of Turin has long been a subject of fascination and debate, with scientific studies attempting to prove or disprove its authenticity since the late 19th century. Beginning in the 1970s, tests were conducted to determine whether the images on the shroud were the result of paint, pigments, scorches, or other agents. Surprisingly, None of these tests provided conclusive results. A turning point came in 1988, when the Vatican allowed three laboratories in different countries to carbon date postage stamp-sized samples of the shroud's linen. The results indicated that the cloth was made between 1260 and 1390, suggesting it was not authentic, as this date matched the shroud's documented first appearance in 1354. This prompted a wave of articles, proclaiming the shroud as a forgery. However, defenders of the shroud's authenticity soon began questioning these results, arguing that the samples tested might have been contaminated or taken from a repaired section of the original fabric. The single sample taken in 1988 was limited to one corner of the shroud, leading to doubts about the methodology. Critics also noted that instead of following standard protocol. By taking seven samples for examination by different labs, only three samples were used. In recent years, new studies have reignited interest in the shroud's origins. In 2019, Italian scientist Liberato De Caro and his team at the Institute of Crystallography in Bari, Italy, used wide-angle X-ray scattering to analyze the shroud's linen published in the journal Heritage in 2022. De Caro's findings suggested that the shroud might actually date back to the time of Jesus Christ. Analysis showed that the shroud did not originate in the 13th century, as previously thought, but rather 1,300 years earlier. The linen's fiber structure closely resembled that of a cloth fragment from Masada, a site from 73 AD, when Jewish rebels were besieged by the Roman army. This cloth sample was dated between 55 and 74 AD, which provided strong evidence for the shroud's authenticity. Other studies have supported this revised dating. Dr. Raymond Rogers, through a vanillin test that measures the fabric's decay over time, found low levels of vanillin, indicating that the shroud's origin could be traced to before the 3rd century. Further testing using infrared spectroscopy pointed to an average date of 50 AD, with a 96% certainty margin of 500 years. Dr. Max Free's study of pollen grains on the shroud revealed types indigenous to Judea, particularly northern Jerusalem, adding further evidence that the shroud originated from the same time and place as Jesus Christ. He discovered that the shroud was exposed in northern Judea for some time, later moved to Edessa, Turkey, and then finally to Constantinople. Interestingly, around the time the shroud was believed to have arrived in Edessa, a shift occurred in Christian iconography. Jesus began to be depicted as a Semitic man with dark features and long hair, just as he appears on the shroud. Over time, even more compelling evidence supporting the shroud's authenticity emerged. But did any of this confirm that the image on the shroud is truly of Jesus? Or reveal how it was formed? 
you're about to uncover the Shroud's most perplexing mystery. Despite decades of study, there is still no definitive explanation for how the anatomically perfect image of a man appeared on the Shroud of Turin. Researchers have long explored theories, including the role of radiation, all to no avail. In 1978, an international team under the Shroud of Turin research project, STIRP, tried unsuccessfully to determine how the image might have formed. They did find that the image is not a painting, as there were no traces of dye or pigment. While the STIRP investigation and later research by John Jackson and Paolo de Lazaro sought to address these mysteries, some theories defy physical explanation and are often attributed to the realm of miracles. A breakthrough in understanding. The Shroud of Turin came when John Jackson proposed that an intense burst of ultraviolet UV radiation created the image on the uppermost fibers of the cloth. According to this theory, the body wrapped in the shroud emitted a powerful flash of vacuum UV radiation, forming the perfect 3D negative image of the body on both the front and back of the cloth without scorching it. This process is unlike any known natural phenomenon, as no human body is capable of emitting such radiation. Jackson's hypothesis was based on a process of elimination, as he had already disproven other theories involving chemicals, vapors, or heat. If chemicals had formed the image on the shroud, they would have penetrated deeper into the fabric. However, the image is limited to the surface fibers, suggesting that radiation was responsible. Since radiation can alter only the surface, without deeper penetration or scorching, the shroud depicts a full-body image even in areas where the cloth did not touch the body. Something chemicals or physical contact cannot explain. UV radiation could have evenly discolored the fibers to create the body's perfect outline without direct contact. Jackson's research suggests that only a burst of vacuum UV radiation could have sensitized the Shroud of Turin to record the body's image in such detail. Producing such an image would require billions of watts of light energy, far beyond the capabilities of any known UV source. Additionally, the radiation would have needed to produce light without heat, as the heat would have instantly vaporized the cloth. In 2010, Paolo de Lazaro and his team tested this theory further, concluding that UV photons could account for the unique thin coloration and the image's appearance in areas not touching the body. The source of such energy, especially in ancient times, remains a mystery. In the end, the only plausible explanation is within the realm of miracles. The double image and X-ray-like effect on the shroud have long eluded scientific explanation, leading some to suggest it was a miraculous occurrence. The image on both the front and back of the shroud could only be possible if the cloth had collapsed through a body that became mechanically transparent. This phenomenon suggests that the shroud might be linked to the resurrection of Christ. The resurrection, as understood in Christian belief, transformed Jesus' body into a glorified, transphysical state, where he could pass through solid doors yet was not a ghost. The shroud may be a recording of this transformation, captured through a miraculous burst of radiation. As researchers delved deeper, they uncovered even more startling secrets. For instance, Roman leptons, coins unique to the time of Pontius Pilate, were found over the eyes of the figure in the shroud. These coins were minted in Jerusalem around 29 AD, coinciding with the life of Jesus. Additional evidence comes from the bloodstains on the shroud, which were present before the image formed, and align with the wounds of crucifixion. In a recent study, Italian researcher Giulio Fanti analyzed the bloodstains, finding that they reflect conditions consistent with Jesus' crucifixion. As described in the Gospels, Fanti noted that the blood flowed in three distinct directions, indicating movement of the body after death. 
There is also a DNA profile on the shroud. And another on the sidarium of Oviedo. Believed to be Jesus's face cloth. Analysis of these bloodstains suggests three different types. Post-mortem blood from moving the body. Less evident pre-mortem stains. Likely from when Jesus was still on the cross and serum leakage. The stains display a unique alignment and indicate that an artist did not create the shroud. It contains genuine hemoglobin. Furthermore, wounds on the shroud correspond to those described in the Gospels, including injuries from a crown of thorns, a Roman pilum, and nails in the wrists, feet, and ankles. With a wealth of evidence supporting the shroud's authenticity, it holds sacred significance, though remains unverified. As believers, we are reminded not to base our faith solely on relics, but on the grace we experience daily. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And click the next video on your screen, you'll enjoy it. If you enjoy our content and want to support us, click on the Super Thanks button below. Your Super Thanks is not just a donation. It is a blessing that supports our mission to share the transformative journey of Jesus. So let's get the video started, but before that, check out yesterday's winner. Look, I've put the channel link to this wonderful member of our faith community in the description of my video. So go ahead and subscribe to his channel and support him. And if you want to promote your channel next time, here's what you need to do. If you're new to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Like the video and leave a lovely comment in the comment box. If you win next time, I will promote your channel in my video.